We also have with us Dr. Vandana Shahi, who is the principal of the BCM School in Ludhiana. She started her career as a lecturer in botany and then went on to become the officiating principal, eventually the headmistress come PGT in a school in Ludhiana, and currently is the principal at the BCM Senior Secondary School from 2004 onwards. She's also the district training coordinator for Ludhiana CBSC COE Chandigarh and the chairperson of the Women's Forum of the Ludhiana Management Association. She herself holds a doctorate in biosciences alongside a master's in biosciences, a bachelor's of science. She has been a gold medalist at her MSc and was a delegate of the FAM tour of Indian principals to Atlantic Canada in April 2013, in which she visited 14 Canadian universities. She was a part of the educational tour to NASA in the US in November 2016. She's a founder member of Aga's Charitable Foundation in Ludhiana, working for the upliftment of women and children. She won the award of honor under I Vote, I Lead campaign, and also has won the Progressive Principle of India campaign by Rethink India Foundation in 2017. She's won the award of honor by Manav Kalyan Sangstan in February 2007, the Ideal Principal Award 2007, the Avantika Sarla Chopra Award 2008, the Priyadarshini Samman 2013, Dr. Radha Krishnan Samman 2018-19, and Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Award 2019. She's also won the award of honor by Punjab Pradesh Maharaja Agrasthen Agarwal Sabha, the Nari Shakti Samman 2014, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021 on Women's Day by Lala Jagatara and Niksham Savin Society in Ludhiana. She's also been awarded as the best district principal by the Science Olympiad Foundation in 2015-16. She's also won the Principal Par Excellence Award in 2020 and 2021 by IIHM Delhi. Um, so these are just to name a few of your awards. Thank you so much for being on the panel today. It's a privilege to have you. I shall start my video now and stop the share. Uh, once again, a very good evening, uh, Dr. Shahi, Dr. Vora. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I would request you to please unmute yourselves. Dr. Vora, if you could also please switch on your camera. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Dr. Jaya. Ma'am, if I may start with you. Yeah, uh, sure. We have been discussing the various pedagogical innovations, right? Uh, you have so much of experience as an educator. Which, in your opinion, are the innovations that have caused the greatest difference in the way you teach? Uh, I'm really surprised that what should I say, because uh, both the speakers, they have talked a lot about it. In fact, Ajin talked about uh, the kind of realities which are going to come to the classrooms in the times to come. And uh, uh, Mr. Bharat, uh, I mean, pronouncing it correct. So he talked about all those small little innovations which are actually required in the classroom. I mean, uh, uh, they all talked about that innovations have been happening, right? I mean, they were yesterday, they are today, they are going to be tomorrow also. In fact, what exactly is innovation? It is just upgrading our current practices to make them better. And mainly we say that they are future, future focused. When we talk about pedagogical innovations, Needless to say that in today's world, it is the integration of technology. The first one is the integration of technology. It's not like technology is new to uh, the schools or to the education sector. It was existing, uh, I think, for the past 15 years, it was there. But just as a cute technology, just as a showpiece in the classroom, as a smart classroom. But actually, uh, as everybody was talking about the pandemic, it was the pandemic which had created the exact need when actually, uh, you know, in the exact, I'm sorry, there is uh, some noise. Oh, okay. So in the actual teaching learning process, it has come only after, uh, you know, the pandemic because we were not left with any other option. Uh, somebody's mic is on. Can you please mute it? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, in the, in the pandemic, then we, uh, um, as Mr. Achin was also saying that, uh, uh, you know, we, first of all, we, we explored the technological platforms. Uh, used, you know, the basic purpose was, the challenge was to keep the children engaged 
in the virtual classroom it was a little difficult so the padlets the mentimeter the podcast the flip grid there were so many uh, you know apps and uh, uh, software to try but then finally came the gamification again uh, i would refer him because game actually there is a myth that if you are playing if you are having fun you cannot learn but the truth is opposite if you are playing the play is the best form of learning i mean the brain acts like that because the neurotransmitters which are secreted there the dopamine serotonin they are actually the center for learning they are sparking the center for learning so gamification again it is very important so uh, there are some ready made digital games are there like kahoot is there quizzes are there but it's not like only the digital games are required we can have the physical games also but in uh, if we if we talk it as a pedagogical innovation so then what we will have to have is the proper learning outcome every game should have a defined learning outcome then it's going to come up very nicely then i would talk about apart from technology i would talk about another thing which is very important according to me and which actually works in our school it is storytelling as pedagogy normally it is said that uh, it is thought like it is only subjects like history or social science which can be taught through stories but no even the logical subjects even science and mathematics can be taught so then we can um, and then we started giving uh, the projects actual real life situations and problems are given to the students and we tell them to solve it as anjin said entrepreneurship is uh, uh, you know uh, it's in the times to come the children will have to stop being the job seekers they will have to be the job creators so for that they actually have to solve the problems we have to inculcate those 21st century skills amongst the um, again uh, n number of uh, uh, pedagogical innovations i cannot talk about all of them i mean these are few which um, i think uh, if slowly and slowly if we bring them to our classroom it's going to be better but technology definitely is going to stay it's not going to go down that's for sure that's my take on this particular question thank you ma'am thank you so much for sharing that with us uh, yes indeed uh, i completely agree with you on the technology front we run an edtech brand after in fact if i may take a second ma'am what you said about storytelling resonates so much with us at notebook in fact the entire design philosophy of notebook is something that we call augmented storytelling there's a story being delivered about the topic augmented with a lot of rich hand drawn illustrations as you, as you just now saw and in fact we are in the process of getting a patent for the same uh, yeah because you, basically there are two things one is inquiry i mean children are inquisitive when they are listening to the story they are thinking about the next step and second is the imagination which sparks creativity which again is uh, you know actually the need of the hour wonderful man thank you thank you so much for that dr vora if i may come to you we are exploring what are those innovations that really resonate with you that change the way you teach yeah you know i would say yes initially if you see our uh, teaching pedagogy it was you know very teacher centered whatever teacher had in her mind that only she was giving it to children but of course joyful learning you know uh, introducing various uh, methodology of course as uh, mr archer said that you know it has gone undergone a lot of evolution and we have now reached to the stage with this pandemic teachers have become the warriors they have undergone the total change total change in their pedagogy from the conventional method of teaching in the classroom with chalk and duster they have now gone online they have become very digital and uh, you know we are mainly it is now becoming more child centered it's it's involving children like wherever children are involved it's you know that is Uh, sort of uh, giving the conceptual knowledge we are mainly focusing on the conceptual knowledge rote learning which was of course part of our uh, methodology before but now yes we are moving towards giving the concept to the children now for that of course the pedagogy has to undergo a lot of changes so i fully agree to what uh, mr achin bhattacharya said that you know it's the flipped classroom which is very very effective i fully agree to it if you give the topic to the children 
once they explore themselves, you know, once you give something ready-made to children, they will not take it so readily. But if they explore it, if they research it, if they, you know, think about it themselves, then they will understand it and will retain it. So after that, if they do discussions in the classroom, if they do, you know, if the problem is given by the teacher and they do discussion on the topic that they have already studied, it will be more effective. And I fully agree to uh, ma'am also. She just said about gamification. Yes, with games, you can always introduce that creative thinking that uh, involvement, that teamwork among students, and then they definitely learn from each other also. It's the peer learning as well. One more thing I would like to say is the, uh, you know, um, soul, uh, which is uh, self-organized learning um, environment. You know, you sort of, prove, if you provide the environment to the children and uh, you give them one problem, like say, okay, this particular problem you solve. I'm giving you 30 to 40 minutes to investigate on this problem, to do research on your own. Now, if they start after their research, they have, you know, in the group, if they start solving their problem, and uh, then after about, say, 30 minutes or 40 minutes, if they are allowed to speak for their group, you know, it's a sort of debate when they are uh, telling about their viewpoint on the particular topic, and in the bargain, they are learning from each other. So this, I feel, is quite a new method, and it will definitely help in their uh, learning process. Recently, I was uh, you know, going through one CBSC webinar also, which was again on innovative pedagogy, and very beautifully, they explained that how, for example, say, um, if you want to explain an atom, how can you explain it? It's with the help of feel also. You know, like you sort of make a diagram with the three-dimensional things on it and close your eyes and then you sort of feel the number of uh, electrons that are present and then identify the atomic number or whatever, the element. So these new innovations in the, uh, you know, pedagogy will definitely take it far ahead. And definitely, I agree that digitalization will stay with us and that will further improve uh, the pedagogy. And uh, I'm sure it will uh, take us long. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Pam. Uh, good. So we have two members on this panel who completely agree on digital is here to stay and that we have had a lot of innovation. So I get to be the devil's advocate. Now we often hear this said that the more things change, the more they tend to remain the same, right? It's a very common adage. And Ochin also, when he was starting out, he spoke about old wine and new, new bottle. Now, uh, through the ages, there have been teachers who kind of pushed the envelope, did things differently. And they were typically seen as better teachers by the students perhaps. Ma'am, would you also say that we are perhaps just recasting or perhaps branding things that teachers are already doing or are these genuinely new inventions as such? Should I? Please, ma'am. Okay. Uh, see, what you said, according to me, you want to say that the actually changes do not affect the reality on a deeper level, right? Uh, a lot of things changing around us, lots of innovations happening, pedagogical innovation happening, then the way we are approaching the curriculum, that is changing, the tools that we are using, everything is changing. Why? The reason behind this is because the world is changing very fast. We all know that, you know, I sometimes say that According to me, the generation gap, it is reducing. It has come to five years only. I mean, it used to be 20 years. Now, the mindset gap, uh, if the generation gap used to be 20 years, mindset gap also was the same. Now, the generation gap is the same. I mean, age-wise, it is 20 years or maybe even more 25 years. But mindset-wise, it has come down. I mean, the world has changed a lot in the last one decade. Because of the change of the world, the demands 
are changing. I mean, the job market is changing. It is com completely, I mean, right now it is not called as a job market because normally everybody is saying that you will have to work on your own. You will have to be entrepreneur. You will have to create the jobs or kuch na kuch apna hi karna padega. I mean, the total system, the total scenario is changed outside. So again, the schools are not standalone. Um, they are not the islands in the society. They are very much a part of the society and they have to change. And of course, Sachin said that education sector is the last one to respond. But ultimately, it has to respond. Now, if I see the deeper level, what is the deeper level is the purpose of education. Purpose of education ultimately is to prepare the students for future to prepare the children for life, to prepare the children for living, right? So that, uh, you know, they can contribute to the economic growth. They can become an um, agent for social change. And this is, this is what is the purpose of education. It was same yesterday. It is same today. And it will remain same tomorrow. But the thing is, the things which were required yesterday, are not required today. Knowledge of article, it is on the click of a button. So it is not required. Now we have we have moved to the higher levels of bloom. So creativity, imagination, synthesis, these are the things. But ultimately, the purpose of education still remains the same, that we want the society to go on. That status quo, it is rather to be maintained. So that is how the changes are happening. But again, uh, towards the end, I would once again say, uh, because technology was trying to come to the education sector for the past 15 years, but it was not, I mean, uh, maybe the teachers were not allowing it to come because they were there in their comfort zone. Now, because of this necessity, it has already come. And now they have seen, now they have seen the benefits of the technology. So definitely it is going to stay. So I cannot say ki these changes would also go very fast. They would they would remain, but ultimately the purpose of education, that would always remain the same. This is what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Dr. Vora will come to you with the same question. Ma'am, we can't hear you. I think ma'am is on mute. I don't think she's on mute. I'll call her. Sure. Today, because we are talking about innovations, technology is really testing us. First with Baritza's connectivity and now ma'am's uh, phone. In spite of all this, still it is quicker. Otherwise, yeah. you know, we had to come to Calcutta. She is coming from Delhi. Yes. And I, they are not possible. Trying. At least, at least this is possible. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, uh, as you rightly said, more things change, the more they remain the same. Yes, definitely. What I would say is the concept never changes. It's the pedagogy that changes. You are giving the same thing. But you know, I what I feel that during our times when we were students, the same thing was given to us, the same concept was given to us, but we actually used to understand the entire thing after four or five years. I mean, and that's my personal experience. I feel the exact thing we used to understand after four or five years. But with this pedagogical innovation, I feel the, you know, our uh, methodology has become so good that whatever the concept is, which will never change, it will never ever change. But then we are able to deliver it in a much better manner. And the uh, process might change of delivering the context. But at the same time, it is the same, uh, you know, the, the the knowledge, the same concept which is being delivered to students and uh, it is delivered at the same level. Whereas I feel during our times it used to, it used to be delivered, but then we used to understand it after four or five years that, okay, it was this. And uh, if you actually see when I became a teacher, when I started teaching, that is the time the few concepts became even more clearer. So it is um, 
the concept always remains the same it is the methodology which changes with time and um, more innovation in the pedagogy as we are going through nowadays uh, during pandemic of course we have shifted to the online teaching and uh, you know we have shifted to digitalization which of course again is very effective and uh, with this methodology also children are understanding so the concept i would again say it it is a concept which remains the same it is a methodology which changes it is the way it, change, it changes the way we are delivering it to students so that's my uh, reply to this wonderful one thank you so much for that uh mom if i may stay with you for a second and because we are down to our last question this is where i ask you to gaze into the crystal ball right uh, we've seen so much of changes we've seen a pandemic go by and things in technology particularly in education have leaped from right where we are in terms of technology adoption today in indian schools perhaps would be sure, in a time yeah. 10 years later had it been a very organic way of getting there the pandemic has perhaps accelerated the process so ma'am in your mind what would be the next big thing what is the next change or the innovation that education could anticipate dr vora if i may come to you first this time yeah uh, you know i feel since we have already moved ahead now with this pandemic you know teachers have become like a warrior they have moved from their normal uh, method to this digitalization they have adopted new uh, technology new methodology for delivering their lessons for delivering their lecture so i feel that with the times now with the changes um it is like say for example you know i was reading that now we can have for example if we want to introduce uh, science any topic of science we can have simulation of that thing in the laboratories we can provide them with the proper um, you know the real experience of the thing in the classroom and then that is how they are going to learn so that is going to be there in the future another few years and we are going to see everything being simulated in the classroom and then being delivered um this will give the real feel of the thing to students and there will be no questions left no doubts left for the topic then secondly i also feel that you know technology definitely will play a major role this will be more developed it will come up in a very big way and uh, children as we can always see that children are more tech savvy now as uh, we people so definitely uh, even we will have to cope up with them and uh, we'll have to adopt to the new technology new methodology and uh, deliver the concept in such a manner that we remain in pace with them so that's it yeah thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much for that and dr shai uh What's yeah i am actually reminded of i have i had seen a model of evolution of education by alan roser it was uh, he had written it it this model was given in 2019 and he had written <coughs> please excuse me <coughs> that over the 10 years <coughs> probably the schools as physical spaces would vanish and there would be completely virtual schools i think pandemic has accelerated that in fact he had given that maybe over the period of 10 years maybe the times are going to come uh, faster than what he had predicted that's what they and another thing as i would uh, completely agree with the uh, neeraj ma'am when she said students according to me india is the country of youth we all know about that right in in the, uh, if we talk about uh, <clears throat> the global innovation index india is climbing the ladders this time it was 46 last time it was 48 then 50 52 so we are you know becoming better and better <laughs> with more and more startups coming and all uh, that and india being 62.5% of uh, the population is the working population Uh, and uh, youngsters generation z being the smart smartest one so i think innovations are going to come from the school students in the times to come that's what i think and they are going to surprise you they are going to surprise you with with as i said unknown unpredictable future we don't know what is going to come from that that's what i think let's hope for the best 
Thank you, Baba. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, in fact, if I may again take a second uh, regarding this innovation coming from students. Uh, as a part of notebooks activities, we also do inter-school events, right? So 20, uh, 19, 2020, we had done an inter-school debate called Zero Hour. 2021, we actually conducted an entrepreneurship challenge for schools, right? We threw it open to school students of all ages. We partnered with IIM Calcutta and we gave some mentoring classes to these students and said, okay, if you have an innovative idea or business concept, come and pitch it to us. And we had judges from IIM Calcutta again, who uh, kind of oversaw those business concepts. The kind of ideas that came out went from waste management to recycling to uh, cryptocurrency. I mean, there was everything in it. And it was incredible. I mean, students of class eight of a particular school came up with this idea where you could have a cafe where old people meet young people on a regular basis to kind of equalize society. And I think having such thoughts coming from young people is an incredible achievement in and of itself for our education system. But ma'am, I completely agree with you that yes, we should be turning to our students for the next round of innovations. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you to both of you for sparing your time and being on this panel. Uh, Mr. Bharat, sir, thank you so much for being here uh, week after week. Today also, sir, when you spoke about those early innovations in education, I think uh, having such simple things as Excel come in as a new thing is uh, something that we all could you know, possibly find amusing. But having that as such a change in your education system is something to think about, which is why you should be looking at even the smallest of technology pieces lying out there. You never know what might change the course of education in the next few years. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, sir.